Well, guys, I guess it's finally about that time that we talk about Beatrix. I apologize that it's taken so long. Um, firstly, the necropsy we did took quite a while in and of itself because we did everything possible to figure out what happened because I really wanted to know. Uh, there was just so many questions with her throughout her life that nobody could ever figure out. And there's good news and bad news with that. Good news in that we know what happened to her, but bad news is we're not entirely sure what caused it. And without some sort of honesty from wherever she came from, we still have no idea where she came from, whether she was a wild caught import bird that was smuggled here illegally or a bad backyard breeder situation, or even combined with that, you know, if she was a product of incest or anything like that. So many factors that go in that uh, can cause all the issues that she had, because apparently what she had was either a birth defect, like a congenital defect, or a hereditary thing. And I guess that still is like, well, she started out with it regardless, so why does it matter? But, you know, it would be nice to know if it was because of a poor, uh, early life nutrition or something like that. So I had a Zoom meeting with the doctor and uh, a nutritionist, professional animal nutritionist. We talked for probably, I wanna say an hour and a half, maybe even longer, maybe even two hours about Beatrix. And uh, I asked as many questions as I could. And what it comes down to is apparently Beatrix had congenital heart issues and uh, not only that, but elevated levels of zinc that we're not sure where that came from. So I'm going to go ahead and read you what the report says, and then we'll go from there because it'll kind of answer some of our questions a little bit and also pose some new ones as well. So we'll start there. Okay, so I'll skim through here. It's a pretty long report, but I did ask her to try to create like a abridged version uh, that's easily understandable for you guys, the viewers. Um, but what she has written is Beatrix was purchased originally from a flea market by a private party where she received substandard care. On arrival to the Toucan TV aviary, she was lethargic with muscle atrophy, wheezing, and nasal discharge, and unable to fly. She recuperated strength and flight over time, but had chronic pale blue discoloration of the paraorbital skin and soft, flaky, brittle quality of the rhinotheca despite being on an adequate diet. Additionally, she had poor feather quality of the tail, abnormal posturing of the tail, and blue discoloration, or possible lack of maturation, of the irises. She presented recently with weakness and decreased activity and rapidly deteriorated. Emergency blood work showed she was in renal failure, which did not correct with fluid therapy, prompting eventual euthanasia. Beatrix died from very extensive atherosclerosis, which led to progressive blockage and stiffening of her arteries with hypertension, multiple organ failure, including cardiac infarctions or heart attacks. Ultimately, she had loss of circulation to a section of intestine that caused death of that segment and infection of the surrounding abdomen. This last lesion was the cause of her emergency presentation and death. Atherosclerosis was a very long-term lesion and may have been due to an improper diet early in life and can also be a hereditary condition in many species. It would be a very rare lesion in a toucan. Many of her other lesions were probably associated with poor circulation. Beatrix also had an elevated level of zinc in her liver. Zinc toxicity can cause important changes in feather skin, beak quality, as well as internal issues and was possibly a second important disease condition. Okay, so basically, like I said, Beatrix had hypertension, which is kind of funny because we all know her for being so angry. Um, I meant to ask if that may have been somehow related, but um, I don't have an answer for you there. I know that's going to be a lot of people's question. Um, but she had congenital heart issues that led to hypertension and then other issues in addition to that, like the zinc that seemed to have prevented her feather quality and beak quality from being good because as I've mentioned before like there's like blue around the eyes or actually the eye itself being blue is not 
something that should be happening with the keel build toucan. They should have green eyes, both their actual eye and the skin around their eye, the orbital skin. And despite having her diet corrected, once she came to me, she never was able to return back to the way she was. And obviously we know her beak continued to flake and things like that and stuff that should be solved with dietary correction. Um, unless there's a fungal infection or something involved, but there was no infection and that's what I, we were mainly checking for every time I took her to the vet and spent all that money was we were wondering does she have some sort of infection that's preventing her from you know expressing her colors properly and you know behaving more like a normal bird because one thing I did notice with her throughout her life was that she did seem to get exhausted more easily than the other birds and my theory back then was maybe something to do with the respiratory infections that she had when I got her it damaged her sinuses inside of her beak or something like that. And she wasn't able to uh, exchange heat because they can, they regulate their body temperature with their bill. So if they're unable to, of course, this was just a theory. So if she's not able to regulate that properly, then maybe she was more prone to overheating. Um, but that wasn't the case, obviously. She had heart issues and had not only had heart issues, but it apparently at some point in her life had several heart attacks that we just weren't aware of. And whether or not they came about when she was with me or, you know, somewhere like before she came with me, some after, there's no way of telling. So I certainly never noticed anything that would indicate that she was having such an issue like that. But of course, Birds are very good at hiding weakness because in the wild, if they show that kind of weakness, they're going to get picked off by a predator. So, <sighs> but what was apparent was her beak not being as vibrant and green as it should be, uh, the skin around her eye not being as green as it should be, and her eyes also stayed blue as if she was still a baby. And I've heard of this happening before where a toucan will keep its baby eyes and never they never change color. They just stay baby eyes. So her eyes were blue because when they're babies, they're blue and then they just never changed. It's up in the air still what exactly caused that because we don't know when this occurred in her life basically. And the best guess we could come up with was it was probably due to early life or early life nutrition. And also, you know, it could be improper breeding. Like I mentioned before, it could be the fact that she was, if she was taken from the wild, they're not going to you know, none, none of these people, regardless of whether it's an improper uh, breeding and nutrition situation, maybe even with, you know, inbreeding involved or whatever, or if they were just, if she was just taken out of the wild, they don't care about what the bird's eating. You know, they'll feed it Cheetos or whatever just to keep it alive until they can sell it and get the money. That early point in their development, and this is something I've seen also, I think I can compare with Maeve, for instance, where they both had kind of squinty small eyes. If you look at Nacho and Jade, their eyes are a lot bigger. And Beatrix and Maeve both had small eyes and both had beak and feather issues. So I think there's definitely a correlation between that, between being in, fed improperly during that period when they grow, you know, when they w go into fledglings and even beyond that, but especially when they're growing from hatchling to fledgling, you have this two month span where they just have, you know, imagine if we matured into 18 within two months, it's going to be a very sensitive time for that developmental period. So I think something's going wrong between that point that's just screwing them up permanently for life. And there's no way to know for sure without actually getting a solid answer out of whoever imported or bred. We don't know again, and there's no way of actually knowing. So we know what happened, but we're still not sure exactly why. And the issues she had were, she said she had never seen them in another bird, let alone a toucan. They're rare. So, and I wish uh, the same doctor, because we have a, a different doctor doing the necropsy now than with Maeve. I wish there was a way that she could have saw her instead, because this one was a lot more thorough than what was done with Maeve. So, but there are similarities, not exact similarities, but there are patterns that, you know, I was just hoping that 
we could get any information at all that might, if we see something like this in the future, uh, it can be corrected. But then, of course, there's no toucan cardiologist. So, you know, and I was born with congenital heart issues as well. And that's a struggle for me as a human being. Like people in, for instance, where I live won't see me for my issues because they're too complicated. I have to drive back to who I've seen since I was a baby, since I was born, to be looked at. So, you know, I know it's a toucan, but still, you know, there's not exactly doctors that are looking for that sort of thing. When I was taking her to the vet, our thought wasn't, oh, she's got some accumulation of zinc or like uh, heart issues that are screwing her up. You know, it was the common things with toucans, infections and fungal infections, stuff like that. So, but in the future, maybe it can be caught earlier, maybe delayed to some extent but you know i asked her i asked the doctor if there was anything we could have done and she was just like you maybe could have postponed it a little bit but that's it she's got a bad roll of the dice and there's not much you can do about it and that sucks but you know if and i've seen a lot of kill build toucans with blue eyes so i don't know just something to keep in mind as we move forward and I owe you guys an apology to an extent as well because I don't know the last few years have just weighed heavily on me and it's I don't know it's just stuff like that I feel with the, with the birds I just feel so deeply about them that it it just really it disrupts my inner peace when stuff like this happens and it's made me question myself in a lot of ways but has also encouraged me because it's like, well, I care. That's a good thing. But on the other hand, I don't, I don't want to go through something like this again. It's just, you know, Beatrix hit me a lot harder. Oh, Rhea's making racket now. Hey, can you be quiet for a second? Look, come down here. Come over here. Look. We're talking about your sister. <sighs> Anyways, oh, just feeling so deeply about the birds, and I honestly did not expect to get hit as hard with Beatrix as I did. I mean, she was the most frustrating <laughs> pain in the ass <laughs> ever. Uh, every day was a wrestling match with her, and um, she never wanted to cooperate. She was by far the most violent of the birds. <laughs> She was always trying to instigate things, and um, she was just friendly enough to come up behind me and bite me in the back of the head every chance she got. So I'm gonna miss her though, a lot. And at the very least, I'm thankful that she had the time here that she did, because when I got her, she was about to die from not a heart thing, a res respiratory infections, you know? And you know, it's amazing that she was able to spend time with her own kind, other toucans, other keel build toucans, outside in the sun, you know, with foraging and enrichment. And, you know, that's an opportunity that she would not have had otherwise. So I'm thankful that uh, I was able to give her that. And you guys were able to give her that, helping, helping me help them. So, um, you know, it's a bittersweet moment, I guess. Because I, I don't, it frustrated me so much that I knew, like for instance, Nacho had some blue skin around his eyes. And I'll, I'll make a diet video about this eventually because uh, the pale skin around the eyes is usually an indicator of something going on with nutrition. And I'll elaborate on that in the future. But, uh, you know, Nacho had a little bit of that going on when I got him, and it was corrected within a couple months, you know, just being on diet, being outside, being in the sun. And Beatrix, for the years I had her, just would not, you know, not go green. So it frustrated me so much, and I didn't know what was wrong with her. Yeah, and um, anyways, but the good news is, you know, things like her vitamin levels and iron levels were all good. 
So, and that's a good indication for, you know, she's living in the same space, eating the same food as the other birds. That's a good indication for all the other birds. The thing I'm curious about is the zinc and talking through Zoom with them, it seems like we we're probably thinking that it's more, it's something she got before coming to me. Cause there's no, none of the other birds have had issues with their feathers or their beak quality or pale, paleness or anything like that. And Beatrix has had her issues ever since I got her. And when I got her, we didn't even have uh, either aviary out here. So, you know, if there's a soil or, you know, zinc in the soil or something like that, and she's eating the dirt, I don't know. I've never, I never saw anything like that. So we were thinking that it's probably something like, if you've ever seen people who import birds or even breed them in really nasty environments. They're usually very cheap metal and the things are rusting out and flaking into the food dishes. The food dishes are rusty, flaking. There's no zinc out here, zinc hardware or even toys, as far as I'm aware, that she could ever get a hold of or any of the birds for that matter. So she probably just had some really nasty cages at some point and accumulated that and it just stayed in her liver. But next time I bring one of the other birds to the vet, we're, we are gonna test to see if there's any elevation in any, any of them. But I don't think there will be. Not sure what are you doing, buddy? Because everyone else's beaks and feathers look amazing. So, <laughs> this is when I need two cameras so I can aim it up, up there at him. And Jade, look, see how, look how close Jade's getting to me now. Isn't that amazing? She won't take food from me or step up, but she's, you know, when I first got Jade, she was throwing herself into the cage walls, bloodying herself because she was so scared. So the fact that she will willingly come up near me now is just a great sign. And um, anyways, I just wanted to let you guys know what happened with everything and update everyone. And I've been postponing doing this video because it's just like, There's just part in, you know, there's just things in my heart that just can't handle this sometimes. And um, I don't know, it's, I'm just really gonna miss her. And um, just thank you guys for helping to give her a second chance. And hopefully there'll be more, more birds like her in the future that we can help as well. But for now, you know, thank you guys for that. And um, I don't know what more can I say than that. But now that I've worked up the courage to kind of talk about all this and go through it, uh, I'm hoping we can get back to some normalcy, um, normal videos, streams, and uh, hopefully that, I don't know. Str I'll be honest with you guys, streaming overwhelms me sometimes and I know everybody wants me to start doing it again and I want to too but it's just the social aspect of it really stresses me out so um, I hope we can get into a rhythm of that again soon um, but yeah if you'd like to continue to help these birds and help me recover from the cost of Beatrix's not only vet care, but the super extensive necropsy we did, which was, I think in total between everything, it was like $4,500. So a, a good portion of it, most of it has been covered and uh, everyone has been kind enough to uh, donate and cover that both from the last video about Beatrix and also on Instagram and stuff like that. So. Uh, I am very thankful for that, but there's still like another $1,200 left. So if we can get that taken care of and hopefully soon, spring is coming just now and it's finally getting pretty outside and I will begin to move all the plants back out and get the aviary pretty again and hopefully everything will start up again very soon. And we'll have some exciting things coming, which if you've stayed to the end of the video, I will now our patrons know about this but there was a couple of months ago somebody did message me about a potential new bird and i've been very hesitant about it and cautious and 
but anyways, if you want to know more about that, stay tuned, or you can join us on our Discord if you're a patron or channel member. So link in the description for all that. Love you guys. Thank you so much for caring about these birds as much as I do. Oh, you got food for me? Everyone's trying to feed me now because it's spring. You want to say bye to everybody? See, look, this papaya, they got you that papaya. You know that? Isn't that nice of them? He doesn't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, love you guys. We'll see you next time.